Hey there folks, Andrew Swan here, and today I'm going to do an update to my tutorial video about uh, AVI Synth, Q2GMC, and FFmpeg. Specifically, I'm going to show you something that you can do once you have AVI Synth set up, which is how to crop and resize video so it can fit in a high definition frame. This is going to be a fairly quick tutorial because I'm not going to show you how to render stuff out afterwards or whatever because I've already covered that in my previous video. If you need a refresher on that or you haven't seen it already, go ahead and check out the video. It should show up in your recommended videos about now. Uh, you can also go to my blog, which is maselatthefront.blogspot.com. There'll be text versions of this tutorial as well as all the other tutorials that I've put out. So if you want to follow along at your own pace or something, uh, that's the best place to go. Anyway, without further ado, let's get to it. So I've got two video files here and two AVI sense scripts, and I'm going to show you two different workflows that you might employ depending on the type of video that you're using. So for the first one, we're going to be using essentially the same AVI Sense script that I used in the previous tutorial, which is a 4x3 aspect ratio standard definition video file that's interlaced. Since it's interlaced, I have loaded up QTGMC into multi-threaded mode 2 using the set filter MT mode command above. And I've loaded up the video file using FFmpeg source two with the name of the video file and the first audio track. Uh, also converted to YV12 color space because QTGMC requires that. Or I think you can do YUY2 as well or something like that, but there's no real appreciable difference in color space between those in this workflow. So we're going to be fine with that. Uh, assume BFF, which means that you're telling AVI Synth that the video is interlaced and it has a field order of bottom field first. Then I'm running QTGMC with preset equals slower and eddy threads equals three. Eddy threads equals three is a setting specific to my system. The number that you put in there may differ depending on your processor. Uh, as I said, I covered that in the previous video, how to set that up as well as prefetch here at the end. And I'm using bilinear resize to correct the pixel aspect ratio of the video so that it is now true four by three aspect ratio on a modern display versus uh, being designed for showing on a display with a slightly vertically stretched image. Okay, so let's just move the playback head to some point in the video here. And let's find a, uh, yeah, good interview shot. So in order to upscale this to high definition, uh, we can do a couple of different things here. Uh, the first would be just to take it directly to say 720p high definition, which you do by using a resize, 1280 comma 720. However, if you do that, you will notice that the image is stretched out horizontally by a fair amount, and you end up with this kind of squished looking video. Uh, some people are okay with this, and depending on your project, you may want to use this, either for artistic reasons or just because <laughs> you've got a client who really, really wants something like this. But uh, for the most part, you're probably going to want to crop the video first so that you don't get this kind of distortion. And in order to do that, I'm going to remove that line and go back to the proper four by three aspect ratio frame. And we're gonna use a crop command. So crop, 
uh, 0 off the left, 68 off the top, 0 off the right, and 68 off of the bottom. And uh, as before, please note that the right and bottom numbers in the crop command, if they are a non-zero number, require a minus sign in front of them. It's a quirk of ABI synth. Don't ask me why it does this. All right, so if you do that, you will end up getting 720 by 404, which is the closest that you can get to a true 16 by 9 resolution, which is 720 by 405. And that's because um, the crop command only works with even numbers. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why this is, but it is a limitation. And if you try to mess with it by, like, say, uh, changing one of these to 69, you'll get an error message. YUV image can only be cropped by mod two. So once you've done that, all you gotta do to put this into a high definition frame size is do an upscale, which you can do with my linear resize. And there you go. Nice, well resized image. Now, depending on the content in the video, you may actually want to crop off a different portion of the image, like essentially taking the viewing window and moving it up or down. Uh, the way to do this is to change the numbers on the crop command by subtracting from one side and adding that amount to the other. So for example, if I wanted to raise this window up, let's remove 34 from the top, and that would leave us with 34. Then we add 34 to the bottom, which gives us negative 102. All right, refresh. And now there's a little bit of headroom over Jake. Uh, so if you were going to use this clip with his interview in it, that would be a probably much nicer way to crop the image. Unfortunately, there's no way to adjust this over time within AVI Synth, at least that I have found. So you can't really do a true pan and scan effect. But for some purposes, I still think that this is a good way of cropping and upscaling an image rather than having to deal with the built-in tools in your video editing program, which might not always give the best quality or you know, might add to the render time or something. Or you may be taking this video directly to a streaming service or something like that. So this image is a little soft and that's kind of understandable. The process of upscaling does not magically add detail to your original image. So especially when you're using something like a bilinear resize, it's going to kind of have the effect of blurring the image a little bit. You can do sharpening to counter this to a certain degree to give sort of the appearance of more detail than is actually in the image. And you can do that in a couple of ways. One is to change the resize method to something like Spline 64, you can also do Lansos or Bicubic. Those are also options there. And it, it just, the difference between them depends on sort of how much and what type of sharpening they do when they process the image. I like Spline 64 because it's a relatively balanced sharpening method where uh, it tries to minimize unwanted sharpening artifacts while still doing a reasonable degree of sharpening. And it actually has three strength levels in uh, 16, 32, and 64. So uh, if you want to mess with that, you can do it. Uh, pay close attention to Jake's shoulder patch, because that's probably where you're going to see most of the detail at first. So you see how that kind of pops out a lot more? 
uh, that's sort of the effect of good sharpening. If you wanted to add some sharpening on top of this, which is something more likely with an image like this where you are cropping out a lot of the image detail to begin with, then you might want to add an additional sharpening filter. You can do that by going onto the AVI Synth Wiki and finding Limited Sharpen Faster, which is on the Limited Sharpen page on the AVI Synth Wiki. I'll have a link to this in the uh, video description notes and uh, obviously on the blog post as well. Uh, if you already have QTGMC set up, you have pretty much all of the required plugins already on. If not, you need to get Mass Tools 2, RG Tools, and uh, if you decide that you want to change the sharpening mode to Unsharp Mask, then you would need to get this Warp Sharp plugin in addition. All right. And you basically would just download the files you need, drop DLL and .avsi files into your AVI Synth plugins directory, and you should be ready to use it. Uh, if you do have the video up already in AVSP mod, be sure to save the script, close it, and then reopen it once you've added any additional plugins, uh, otherwise it will not be detected in AVSP mod. All right. So uh, to call limited sharp and faster, it's literally just limited sharpen faster and parentheses, and that's it. As you might have seen on the page, there are additional options. I generally don't tend to mess with them. But if you want to, just feel free to look over the wiki page. It's fairly clear about what each of the individual things do. Okay, so um, you will now see that Jake's shoulder patch is really standing out. <laughs> In fact, this might be a little too much sharpening. Uh, it's something that you may not see as much when the image is static like this. But in motion, you will notice that all the video noise that's in the image uh, really stands out when you sharpen a lot. And this is in an image that has relatively low compression artifacts. Um, so if that's the case, what you may want to do actually is to ease off on this. And you know, you just have to kind of tune these things to your preference. So uh, in this case, what I might do actually is try doing something like going to a bilinear resize and see what that does. Yeah, and even just that much looks better to me. So you can play around with these settings and find what works for you. There is kind of no one right setting for this. Uh, and obviously there are other filters out there you can play around with. So just experiment until you find something that you like, but make sure to look through the entire video to make sure that if you have different shots within the video, that everything still looks good uh, with those settings. Don't just focus on one area, unless you are only gonna be using that one area in your final project. All right, uh, I'm gonna save this script and I'm gonna open up the second one so you can see another model for how to do this. Uh, this is something that you are more likely to run into with DVD video or like say a master for a DVD video at some point. 90% um, of DVDs are mastered in what's known as anamorphic widescreen. And if you don't know what that is, let me just show you briefly. Okay, let's get to an image with some text as well so you can see that. Um, you can see that Todd here is looking really stretched. Or to be more accurate, the image is squished inwards by quite a bit on the sides. And the way that this works is this is coming from an image that it was originally shot in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. 
what happens is when you convert it over to a anamorphic DVD, what you're doing is squishing the image so that it'll fit within a normal standard definition video frame. The advantage of this is that instead of having something where, like say it's a letterboxed uh, widescreen image where you have black bars at the top and bottom in order to preserve the aspect ratio of the original image, you're actually using the full frame in the video so that you can retain more of the image detail. It does require, obviously, that your DVD player or TV will unsqueeze the image before displaying it to you, but every DVD player that's been made <laughs> probably since some prototypes in the early days of the technology will do this. So it's only really an issue if you're trying to work with it on your computer within, like, say, a high-definition project. The good thing about this, though, is you don't have to do any cropping. Because the full image detail is already in the frame and is designed to be unsqueezed, all you have to do is unsqueeze the image by resizing it to a high-definition aspect ratio. So, uh, in this case, I'll just do a bilinear resize. 1280, 720, and boom, there you go. You will see now that it works perfectly. Um, you will notice that the image does still look a little soft. However, I will tell you that if you are coming from a DVD, you want to be very careful about the sharpening that you introduce. Uh, because DVDs are very heavily compressed video files, and when you add sharpening to them, it will make the compression artifacts stand out a lot more. And this is something that you will see a lot more in motion than you will in still frames like this, um, especially if you just sharpen the heck out of something. So, for example, if I was to do spline 64 resize and limited sharpen faster you will see that the text looks great in terms of sharpness but <laughs> if you look really closely at the uh, detail of the background here you will notice that there are a fair number of compression artifacts here so um Obviously, if you're trying to do like a quick shot where you're trying to match up uh, some standard definition footage with like a tack sharp high definition uh, clip or something like that, then you might be able to get away with it. But in general, it's better to leave the image a little bit softer than uh, you might otherwise want in order to avoid these artifacts if you're working with a heavily compressed video source. Now again, not all compression formats are the same here. Some newer ones like H.265 are a lot better at uh, doing compression at lower bit rates. So you may not have this same amount of uh, compression artifacts in your image, but just keep that in mind, all right? Uh, for my own personal purposes, I probably would just go all the way back to a straight bilinear resize and just avoid all of that altogether. But it's entirely up to you. So anyway, that is two examples of how to do resizing in ABI Synth. Um, Changing resolutions is really easy. Changing the crop command is fairly simple. It just might require you to do a little basic math <laughs> if you want to move the viewing window around. But it's not all that complicated. So that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, for next time, I think what I will end up doing is a fairly deep exploration on frame rate 
and how to sort of change frame rate around. Uh, this is kind of a subject where there is a very good reason why really expensive frame rate conversion software exists. And it's because unless it's a frame rate that cleanly divides into another frame rate, it can be very difficult to do sort of a nice looking frame rate conversion. So that will be next time. Uh, for now, though, thanks for watching and happy video editing.